blue and yellow aesthetic. Say so much and at the same time nothing at all. So this is the third game in the series, and somehow arguably the best. Now that's dinner party bragging rights. Wait, there's a message from Mario. He's aware of our existence. He seems okay with it. As though he's fine with his life being controlled by others. And not having the free will he probably thinks he has. There's a sense of contentment there. In a way, a lot of our childhood is devoted to achieving his goals. Or maybe he's the one who has us under his control. Wherever the river takes us, I guess. We can now get the frog suit. It could just be a snazzy Halloween costume. Or it could be the skin or the scales of whatever of a giant living frog. As though Mario is some kind of shaman harnessing the amphibious ability of the creature. Are we being watched? Well, everything seems to be watching us. I mean, look at all these items. You can really see where the imagination comes in. These symbols and concepts. Mario can be anything he wants. Or maybe he already is. Like having the power to burn anything to a crisp. It's just there to remind him. He just has to embrace it. Do you ever think Mario's a Sicilian? One of the new power-ups is a Tunuki suit. You can fly and turn into a statue. I guess it uses the mythology of the Japanese dog thing, humongous testicles. Maybe that could have been used as a power or something. Mario Luigi should have got big balls, and he can go up to Bowser and, and his minions and say, I'm man enough to face you, and anything you've got in store for me. It might not be a tactical advantage, but he might have an initiative. It could make Bowser more insecure. There's a happy little cloud. And I was happy when I used that happy little cloud, because I could skip that damn level. Sorry for saying damn. But they're not to be mistaken for a fluffy little cloud that are known to be seen in Arizona. Boy, it was cool when you discovered that warp whistle. It helped so much. We were perfectly happy getting by something than going through it. It's very nostalgic, but don't be sad that those times are gone. Be happy that we warped. This page tells you you can get a game over. How devastating. There are eight kingdoms. Do you know what that means? It means there are eight kingdoms, including Waterland. You can see something that looks like Japan. It's not Japan. Think of it as the barrier to separate what's real and what isn't. There's also Skyland, divided into two parts, heaven and earth. In order to get to the second part, you've got to go up the tower, the Tower of Babel, the structure made by man to ascend the heavens. But the Lord laid waste upon the people who constructed it, punishing their hubris. Or maybe it's not, I don't know. The baddies come in all shapes and sizes, like a chain shop, which is a mix between a cannonball and a shark. Boo Diddleys, possibly the ghosts of kids who were playing red light, green light when they died. Now they're doomed to haunt wherever they are, obeying the laws of the game. I guess this game is not afraid to go pretty dark. A bunch of carnivorous plants, like in real life. But nothing as dangerous as these things, I guess. Apart from maybe the Madagascar. Making it very sympathetic. I mean, look at it. It's a flame that comes from a candle. And then there's the Koopa Kids. You know I'm gonna say it. Raising seven kids by yourself is not easy got the feeling that this one might be a little special. Each one of them has a wand from one of the seven kings. Did they pick which kingdom they would go after? Does it say something about them? We love being mean. I'm not sure if that's true. Maybe it's just your father talking. It's nice to see that he cares about his papa. This is not how to play Mario Free, this is how to get by in Mario Free. Now for Mario World, I just can't get my head around it. That's pretty creepy.